I will call this special meeting of the Bo uh, Bethel Board of Selectmen to order for Wednesday, November 18th, 2020. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge to, the allegiance flag, to the flag of the United States, of, the United America, States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. for all. All right, thank you very much. Uh, first order of business, we'll just get this out of the way quickly. We have three vacancies to refill. Uh, these are midterm vacancies. All three of these folks happen to be Democrats, so I will put a motion on the floor that we approve the following. Uh, Nick Vitti Jr. to replace Bonnie Brown and the Economic Development Commission. Ken Kopeck to replace Tom O'Leary and the Insurance and Pension Commission. And Pat Orsino to replace Dina Valenti on the Ethics Commission. So is there a second? Rich has seconded the motion. Any discussion? And hearing none, um, please signify by saying aye. 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 And that motion carries and we'll get out letters to those folks today. I think Ken actually joined the uh, first insurance and pension commission as a non-voting member today. So he's, he's, already, uh, he's already jumped into it. So we, I thank all three people for volunteering and I thank the others for the service that they gave the town. So on to the uh, consideration of the fire, fire commission. Um, I want to welcome uh, former Chief uh, Kenny Parchisepi, Chief John Baker, Chief Scott Murphy, and of course, uh, former Chief and Director of almost everything that burns or <laughs> otherwise catches fire, Tom Galliford. And uh, so I, I don't expect to have a vote tonight. I just wanted to have a discussion with you guys. I think you've had a chance to look over the draft that has been now updated a couple times, correct? Yes. Yeah. So we would like to have your input and we'd like to know um, what you, how you think this would best work, what you think uh, it, we should avoid, any changes that would be made. And let me, let me, before you start, let me just say one thing, which I think is important. Um, there's been a lot of press about the, the, uh, the tower truck and, and how we wound up here. This is a, a far more positive thing in my mind um, and I, I really think we're long overdue to do something like this. And I'll just, I'll just use the, the, uh, the fact that uh, Tom brought to us this year the, the, um, the request for radios. We, we need uh, 350,000, I think, or so for radios to replace the, the, the radios. Um, I think what we need is just a, a more, um, a, a longer, timeline. We need people who can pull the two departments together, look at their long-term needs. Uh, we've we folded fire equipment, fire apparatus, the, the big stuff, into the capital planning long ago. But um, every year, uh, I know for just for me personally, being uh, not really well educated in the, in the fire services, you know, I, I, I know that there's a certain number of uh, uh, breathing apparatus, the, the self-contained breathers that we need to replace, certain amount of turnout gear, um, certain amount of other equipment, uh, the hearse tools. I think what we need is just a longer view of how to um, plan for the future and coordinate both the departments, uh, seeing as how we have uh, so many dedicated volunteers that are working for one town. How do we make the best use of that without duplicating efforts, or without letting one department or the other go without something that they need. So if, if like, like many, many other towns that, uh, that have fire commissions or similar structures in place in their town government, that's how I see the role of this, uh, this group functioning. So with that, I will, uh, first let me ask Rich and Paul if you wanted to add anything before we open up the floor for discussion. No, I think you covered it all, Matt. Pretty much. And I, I would say the same thing here, except that, you know, the one thing that I'm always concerned with, it's the fact of maintenance, okay? Uh, we've seemed to have, you know, it's just not the fire department, but, you know, there's other areas too in the town that maintenance seems to always fall off the truck occasionally. And, you know, with the type of capital equipment that we've got, I think we've got to maintain records which are available, okay, specifically by 
by the piece of a capital equipment, namely the trucks themselves, okay? And perhaps even some of the gear that goes along with it. And, you know, whether it's, it's the building, the capital equipment, uh, whether it's trucks or other things like this, this is where I think a fire commission will come into play to, you know, uh, plan. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a person of planning. And, you know, this is something that sometimes we're just putting a guess on some things. And I just like to avoid this such that when it comes down to the annual budget, we, we know where we're at. We know where we're going in the future. So uh, I, th those, those are my comments. All right, thank you. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll open up the floor for, uh, for feedback and comments. So, um, so, so Matt, go, yeah, go ahead. Hi, it's Tom. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll start it off, I don't mind. Um, <clears throat> so as you know, I, I sent, I made some comments on your um, draft proposal and I, hopefully Rich and Paul saw it as well. Yeah, they, um, everybody got that. All right. Yeah. So again, whether or not, you know, we need a commission or not is not what I'm going to debate, but if we're going to do this, I think it needs to be done the right way the first time and, and cover all the bases and all the areas that we need to cover. Um, you know, and I've been a big advocate for many years now that there's nowhere in the town charter or any town ordinance that recognizes or states that the Bethel Fire Department and the Stony Hill Fire Department are kind of the, the clear agencies that provide fire and EMS services to the town. And I think that's an important part that needs to be put into this commission somehow, into the ordinance, into the wording. So that's in there. Um, and, and I kind of spell that out there. You know, we've had some issues um, with, uh, you know, with a lawsuit years ago and whether or not the fire departments were town agencies or not and who was going to supply counsel for us. So it, it creates an issue. Um, so that, that's something I think is we got to just, you know, really take our time and make sure we're able to, to put that in there somehow with, and I provide some sample wording and whatnot, which is very similar to what a lot of other, other towns do. Um, uh, the, let me just say that that, that is, uh, you're exactly right about that. That's a, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think it's a necessary one. Uh, just so everybody on the call knows, <coughs> Um, under under Connecticut law, which has changed uh, an awful lot since the 1830s when Bethel's first volunteer company was organized, the taxpayers are responsible for quite a bit. Um, and we've already had uh, like workers' compensation insurance, for example. Volunteers are considered to be employees of the town under employment law. So the town does have to cover unemployment insurance if somebody gets sick or injured. So we've already had some issues come up with uh, related to COVID or um, uh, fire scene uh, minor injuries. So we're we're all joined at the hip anyway. So uh, I think you're exactly right, Tom. It, the time is long past to formalize it, to define the relationship and define the roles and responsibilities and move forward from there. Because uh, to your point, when I looked at uh, not so much town charters, but town ordinances from, from other towns, they all do have ordinances that spell out that relationship. And I think that that would be a, a benefit to all parties. Right, yeah, absolutely. And then and the other big point that I just wanna uh, just state here for the record, and again, it's, it's noted in there is, you know, we, we had this current EMS commission um, that was developed years ago because of issues with EMS. Um, so, you know, that there's already something on the book, so to speak, um, that deals mainly with EMS, but I just think it might be a, a better uh, intent to kind of combine a fire, make it a, you know, maybe revise that in order to make it a fire and EMS commission and kind of change the, the powers and duties of, of that and what their roles are. So that's one commission. We don't have redundancy in, in two different commissions and, you know, they, they're going to overlap as far as reporting and, you know, having uh, the ability to get paperwork and financial documents and whatnot. So I just think it would be a, a wise, wise choice and a wise move to kind of combine it into one commission that is that covers both fire and EMS under one. So you, like, sort of like a public safety commission that, that uh, covers both of them? Uh, yeah, I mean, even if you just call it the fire and EMS commission, you know, whatever, whatever word is, but yeah, because public safety kind of gives you, you know, just the, it's a nuance of words of public safety. You kind of throw police in there too, and, and they have their separate commission and they're a whole separate entity. So yeah, you're I right. think it would be wise to, to make it part of that, you know, just so we don't have two separate commissions that 
again, like I said, there, I think there's going to be a lot of overlap in there. Yeah. How often does the EMS commission um, meet? Uh, well, by ordinance, it's supposed to be quarterly, but we they they don't meet very often at all. So that that's part of the problem too. Okay. Uh, all right. Um. Yeah, and again, the only other thing really I, I noted in here is as far as who's going to be on the commission, um, you know, there's a note in here, your note states about a current member of the fire department or the fire companies are not precluded from serving on the com commission. Yeah, that um, was, that was, yeah, that's one of the suggestions. Yeah, well, you know, my only concern with that is for some reason, member of Stony Hill is on it, but not a member of Bethel isn't appointed or and vice versa. You know, does that kind of create any kind of issue as far as, you know, equal representation. So is it that someone, a member of each fire department is always on it or someone from the fire department is never on the commission. I just think that needs to be clarified better. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All so, right. So those are my big issues, um, you know, or points of clarification I think would be important to have on there. And again, I just added some other things like submitting an annual report, um, to the, the commission, you know, just to kind of give them an annual report um, and just questioning whether the commission should have to get monthly reports or quarterly reports for, um, you know, billing and, and financial information and, and call summaries. Just again, it's just another another thing to have to produce in a short order for the, you know, the, the fire chiefs and the volunteers to, to provide that on a monthly basis or is it easier to do it quarterly or whatnot? Uh, what, what, what would you suggest? What do you think works? I, I think quarterly would be okay. I mean, a monthly, you know, financial statement's not really going to show you much from month to month. I mean, I think quarterly would probably be. I don't think know, we have that much going on that more than. Yeah, and a month's time isn't going to, you know, be an eye opener to something. So I, I think okay. maybe quarterly may be better. Okay. Uh, Scott and John, does that, I mean, does that work? Or, I mean, we're, we're, we're not trying to create busy work. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was my concern is if we're doing something on a monthly basis or even a bi-monthly basis, being volunteers, we spend enough time at the, the five months as it is to try and uh, create that uh, frequently um, when there isn't that much going on as far as the, the call volume. Um, and obviously we're submitting the, uh, the invoices and bills uh, to the finance board. So they have an idea of what the, uh, the financial aspect is, but I think quarter, um, quarterly would be more appropriate. Okay. All I, right. I tend to I tend to agree. Uh, quarterly would be better. I think getting the paperwork organized. Uh, you know, we we do we do have a little bit of an upswing in our call volume downtown. Um, I think it'd just be a lot easier quarterly to get everything together. Okay. Hey Matt, it's Kenny. Let me just yeah, let me just ch chime in. Hi guys, how are you? Uh, I, I agree with everything Tommy said, right? Um, Tommy and I've spoken a little bit. Um, a couple of things I'd highlight, right, is, you know, the, the funding methodology for the fire department because of the blending of the nonprofit corporation and the town funds is very complex, mm -hmm. right? It's not as simple as the police department because it's they get their money from one place and one place only, right? And right. it's pretty straightforward, you know, everything is paid for by the town. When you mix in the, the fire department and EMS, especially, right, it gets complicated, it right? And, and um, members of the public may not understand those nuances, mm -hmm. right? So I, although I agree with, you know, Tommy, Chief Galliford about not having someone from, from the fire department on, I don't know how you don't have anybody from the fire department on mm -hmm. because, you know, you know, take the topic of computers, because I know it came up with Bethel Fire, right? Mm -hmm. You know, here's a line. Is the computer used for EMS work or is the computer used for fire department work? Mm -hmm. they, they, they should be funded from two different places, depending upon the answer, mm -hmm. right? A, a member of the general public wouldn't even know they asked that question, mm -hmm. right? So I, I know there can be friction between the two departments, but I don't know how this group that you guys want to propose, which I think is a very, very good idea, um, succeeds if you don't have input from the fire department. Now, maybe they're not formal voting members of the commission, 
maybe they're advisory members to the commission. I, I, I don't know what the, the right thing to do is, but I think the conversations that take place have to include the perspective of uh, a knowledgeable person in, in the town that's been involved mm -hmm. with both departments. Mm -hmm. right? uh, just, you know, it's just, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be successful if you keep the fire department at arm's length, I think. Uh, uh, you, that good point. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the issue uh, of the uh, computers because that's a that's something that just popped up uh, recently, and it really it, it's another goal that we need to achieve because it, it came to my attention that um, Scott, I think it was from your department that you, you needed some help with uh, with was it machines with 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 basic computers or was it internet connectivity? It's Two, two of my computers are still on Windows 7. It would be my computer and my assistant chief's computer. It's not the EMS ones. It's, it's yeah. the fire department ones. You see, uh, my feeling is it's time that we integrate both, both houses into, the, into the, the overall technology plan of the town, uh, both for uh, computer connectivity and for phones. You know, how can you be an agency of the town and be, <laughs> I, I don't even know how you can, still operate a Windows 7 machine anymore because there's hardly anything that's compatible with it. So I, I think this is a responsibility of the town to, to, uh, to integrate that so that you guys are fully online and uh, we can reach each other. You can reach the yeah. public too. Well, that's, that's what we're, we're trying to do. You know, we just, um, conversations with Nick, we just get our phones upgraded. They're still doing some work on that. And while I was there, I said, you know, these two computers we need to get upgraded. And they're both they're both town owned computers. They're both the fire computers. Mm -hmm. um, EMS purchases their own and they they maintain their own. Like, you know, like Kenny said, it's it's there's a line there and a lot of people don't understand how that line works. Um, and, and some of the general public wouldn't know what to what to ask or, or how to approach some things. Uh, maybe a way to do it is to have because the two chiefs have to report, maybe have the two chiefs of the department be ex officio type members of the commission would, you know, would be one way to resolve the problem. You know, where you have input from both departments and you don't have, like Tommy said, you know, this one from Stony Hill or this one's on there from Bethel, but no one's here and, and you don't have that going on. Mm -hmm. You know, because just to Paul's comment about, about, capital plans. Paul, I, you probably remember, because I did it for years, we used to submit a capital plan for all capital items, right? right. And then for whatever reason, the, the board asked us to not to do that any longer. So we did do that planning. I, I will say, though, sometimes it fell on, uh, on, on, the, on the budget room floor all the time. But we did, at times, for years and years, produce capital plans for all items that were above X amount of dollars, right? For whatever reason, that procedure stopped. Well, you know, my, my comment is essentially, if you look at industry, and you know, we, we all served in industry, uh, these these plans are always flexible from year to year. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm I'm just thinking of bringing this thing into the 21st century. You know, unfortunately, uh, some things we've just allowed to go by the wayside, and that's usually because of budgetary things. But I think uh, part of a uh, fire commission, uh, and I, I like. Uh, uh, Scott's idea about an advisory having perhaps the chief from each department uh, participate in the, the, the commission because, you know, here we sit on the board of selectmen and, and the only time we really hear from you is uh, budget time specifically, okay, for, for capital equipment. Uh, whereas a fire commission, uh, you know, they, they can be on top of it constantly and push comes to shove, you know, they always can come to the board of selectmen. For, for, for a particular issue. I, I, I understand what, uh, uh, Kenny, what you were saying relative to capital equipment for EMS. Perhaps in this document, we should uh, specify uh, what is uh, EMS responsible for uh, capital equipment and uh, separating it from uh, the uh, fire side. Yeah, it's not that simple to do, Paul. It's, it's possible. But you have, the, you have to start someplace, you know. Uh, ag agreed. I mean, you know, there's, I don't, I don't, you know, I've been around for a long time, right? 
you know, 30 plus years. I don't remember ever having a conversation with the town about where the lines fell be between the nonprofit and the town, right? Probably something long, long overdue, yeah. right? But that I don't think that conversation ever, ever has happened. It's up to the to the chief and to the board of the nonprofit to decide on certain budgetary things, you know, who gets to pay this bill? Is it the company bill or is it the town bill, right? There's some judgment involved there. You know, you take EMS training. Is it, it should it be, should it fall on the EMS company or should it fall on the town? You know, you know, we use it in both sides of the, of the fence for the fire department and for the EMS side of the, of the, of the department. So, you know, those things have always been submitted to the town, right? But someone might debate that topic. Right, we never really had those conversations, right? Well, maybe you know, we we all know that EMS it's an a absolute necessity. Okay, uh, you know, I've always known that uh, EMS, you guys take care of uh, primarily. You know, in my mind, as just as a resident, it was always just the ambulances. We we never discussed it. What, how far does that go relative? What is response? Who is what? Uh, EMS is responsible for, and you know, maybe this is the time to put it in a document like that. Yeah, and there's, there's, there's a huge crossover between firefighters that are also EMTs and EMTs that are operating on the ambulance, right? So, it, it, you know, there's, it's a complicated picture because I don't think many people understand we fund the ambulance directly, right? I mean, yes. you got, the town helps us tremendously, right? The town provides a place to store it, uh, you know, provides the, the fuel for it, provides you know, workers comp for all the MS members. It does a lot of things that most people probably wouldn't understand. Right? I agree. You know, I agree. I, I just like, I would just like to start it. That, that, that's. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, I, I guess, I guess think that, you know, when you choose the members of this, of this commission, they need to be somewhat knowledgeable about fire and EMS service to have a fruitful conversation. Oh, I agree with you. I fully agree with you. And, and Kenny, this is this is probably the time to start identifying some of those issues that so it is written down and you know it's not so uh, ambiguous that you know is it this or is it that so uh, yeah maybe the fire commission can you know put some of those answers to bed you know yeah I I don't disagree, Rich. You know that uh, I, I'm I'm seriously not trying to create uh, another headache <laughs> for anybody, but Kenny, your your commentary about the the ambulance corps brings up that issue again. Um, does it still make sense to have two entities in the same building that are separate financially, but not really? I yeah, mean, uh, I mean, to, I'm, to... I'm, I'm very opinionated on that topic you know, from my experience, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think you, the town benefits from the guidance of the fire chief. Um, the two teams work so jointly together all the time to, mm -hmm. to separate them in my opinion would be, would be a mistake, right? I know others will disagree with me strongly. Uh, I, I really think they, I think the guidance, now maybe they're in a separate building and not in the fire department per se, but I think you benefit from the guidance. If you have a good fire chief, you benefit from the guidance of the fire chief, oh, right? Because it, because it's it's one it's one the service is the one and the same, right? I yeah. mean, where you draw the lines is kind of arbitrary, but you know you if you have a good chief in place, no disrespect to anybody on, uh, that's here on the on the on the call, um, it, it works, right? you know if you separate it out you, you now have a, a, a another set of administrators to deal with and i guess think that complicates the issue beyond where it needs to be that's my personal opinion well right. actually my brain was going in the other direction of about integrating not separating like you know how can if we're if we're going to integrate uh, the two fire operations and make sure that we're all on the same computer network uh, for mm -hmm. better communication, the same phones. This is a much longer conversation than just this fire commission discussion right now, but maybe it's time to integrate the ambulance side too. 
uh, for the same well, reason. Uh, you know well, that. Yeah. I think you. I think you. I think you've heard my opinion on that topic before, <laughs> right? Well, I, 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 I no, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I agree that, you know, if we could work together better and there'd be less animosity between the companies, that there should be one EMS service. I think in the end, um, it's it's a financial advantage to the town, mm -hmm. um, to do it that way. Mm -hmm. I think in the end, it's going to be, um, it's going to be easier to provide and uh, easier in quotes to provide the EMS service because mm -hmm. you have a bigger pool of people to deal with, to, to pull from. And at times, you know, when the call volume is lower, um, you don't have two different departments trying to get a crew out at three o'clock in the morning for mm -hmm. a call, right? You, you, if right. you combine staff, you get the opportunity to spread that, spread that load further, right? I'm, I'm an, I've been in agreement for years mm -hmm. since the conversations with Mr. Burke way back in the day that the services should be combined, right? So that tells you how long I've been on this page. Right, and just just to kind of touch on that, I, you know, I think there's some, a little nuanced difference of combining the EMS services into one or, you know, pulling them out of the firehouse. I mean, I think one PSA is what we've all kind of thought we should do. And then it's the question of, okay, if we combine the PSAs into one EMS agency, can they still stay in the firehouses and, and leave them the ambulances in the building and and use the town fuel and whatnot, or rather than taking them out of the firehouses and having the, you know, either the nonprofit, the new nonprofit or whatever builds a building, you know, has to put up money to build a building or the town is going to put up money to to build a separate facility. That's that's a very long range question, you know, that part of yeah. it. But as far as combining the two PSAs together into one EMS agency. That yeah. works out of each fire station. I think you know. I think that's that's a, a shorter term goal, and, and then you move to whether you. Yeah, and and, and a, a, a benefit of that, if it goes, if that if that reorganization was were to go well, was you could you could absorb the the paramedic PSA into that same program, right? And then right. then that's really where you have the most flexibility on how to provide the service, and in the end will definitely reduce the expenses to the town. Yeah, and, and again, that's why I think this commission should be combined with the EMS commission and the one where you have that ability and you have some of that, I don't want to say teeth or some of that you know, information in there already in the EMS commission that allows you know, for the town to, to help to steer that a little bit. So uh, yeah, I was, I was going to say the same thing. It, it argued it, this uh, the whole EMS thing is a separate conversation, but um, it, it's it's just something to put on the burner for yeah. phase two, maybe down farther down the road once we get through this. But it combining EMS and fire into one commission does does make sense from that perspective. I, I agree with that. Okay. More comments. More feedback? Any anything else? Well, I have no problem with um, the EMS and the fire commission being combined. There was one other thing that I was looking at as well as the combining of the the two budgets and just having one budget for the entire fire department. I don't know how that would work. Carter. Well, John, that was just. I mean, again, I was just writing stuff down. I was thinking about. I, I you know, I think ultimately they they kind of stay separate budgets like they do now. And, you know, and I, I think, you know, look at Newtown, they have a fire commission and they have five fire companies and they have five different budgets for each fire company. And they kind of uh, leave it up to the, the fire departments and the fire chiefs to decide on, you know, what their budget needs are and, and the commission then kind of approves, approves it for them. So I think probably leaving it as one. Yeah, absolutely. I, I smile, Tommy, because even Newtown, Newtown stuff is even more complicated yeah. than ours. Because some some trucks are owned by the fire company, some right, trucks right. are owned by the town. It's a, you know, every everywhere you look, it's all done a little bit differently. Yeah, right, right around us, it's done very differently. You know, Brookfield's a whole another conversation about trucks and funding and everything else, right? So, right. Th there's not there's not a standard in the Greater Danbury area of how the fire departments are funded and 
capital equipments fund and all those things. It's it's kind of, you know, I, I'll say it, I'll say it this way, tongue in cheek. We are very lucky in the town of Bethel to get get the funding we get from the town. Right. That that does bring up a question that that I wanted to ask. Um, uh, both both companies do. I, I know that there's fundraising on the ambulance side, but you on the fire side, uh, do you guys do fundraising, private fundraising? Uh, I I'll speak for Stony Hill, and I'm, it's probably the same for for Bethel. It's one and the same, Matt. There's no okay. there's no differential. All right. The reason I ask is, uh, and this is one of the things that I think uh, everybody, we all need to be, you know, on the same page and working as a team and, and operating with full transparency. Uh, the, oh, geez, this has been a year now. Last year, go just about this time, uh, I was at the CCM convention and talking to some colleagues of mine from around the state because the budget season was coming up. And one of one of the first selectmen I talked to said, um, he says, yeah, he says, you know, we we cut back the operate. Well, they they proposed a budget. They and they're structured just very similar to us. I don't know if they have one or two volunteer companies. It was a smaller town. And he said, um, I tried. I, I wanted to cut back on the operational side because uh, they they had some big expenses coming into their town operating budget and the, the fire service pushed back on it real hard. And in the end, they said, um, the fire service said to the first selectman, I'll tell you what, um, leave the operational budget the way it is, the way we presented it, don't, don't cut it back, but we'll, 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 we'll uh, contribute $100,000 to the next uh, apparatus purchase. So, so I, that, that, uh, piqued my interest because I've never heard of that. So it turns out that what they do is they have a separate fundraising thing and they just stick the money in the bank and they try to try to offset the cost of the uh, the fire trucks. So is that something that we can do? What, what, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I'll tell you, Matt, the, the, the fundraising, the, the small percentage of profit from the EMS service billing, um, in Stony Hill, it goes to to purchase the ambulance, right? We spent yeah, Tommy yeah. two hundred and twenty, thirty thousand dollars on the on this latest bus. Yeah, yes, right? which we paid for in cash, right? Mm -hmm. Based based yeah. upon saving money up for like twelve years, right? Yeah. So that's where that fundraising and the small amount of profit that comes from the EMS billing after we pay for our our staffing expenses goes to. Yeah. Right, um, and it goes to other EMS supplies. We both Bethel right. bought two Lucas's. We bought a Lucas device. You know, that's twenty twenty five thousand dollars alone for that device. You know, the AEDs. We so yeah, the money the money goes in for EMS. It, it doesn't. You know, they're really yeah. We 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 pay we pay for all the EMS supplies in in years past. I mean, many years past. You, we used to get it free from the hospital, but now the fire companies purchase all those supplies yeah. on the open on the open market. Right. And, and, uh, and as you know, from do, dealing with COVID stuff, none of it's cheap. So but what you're saying is uh, to, to try to do the same thing on the fire side is just, is it, what, is that asking too much of the community that, that you're, you're <laughs> fundraising in two different directions at the same time? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll give you an example, right. From what I know about Brookfield, right. Brookfield for the most part, doesn't fund the fire service from the town budget. Right. Yeah. They fund the fire service from the um, from their fundraising drive, and the townspeople know that, right? Okay. So the town the townspeople kicking big to the fund drive because they know that's the majority of the money that the, that the fire department gets because they're not getting it directly from the tax base, right? They do. The town does kick in in special circumstances at the request of the departments, right? But the people understand it here in Bethel. I think everybody understands it's in their taxes, right? You know, we, we fundraise, um, you know, on behalf of the ambulance and the fire service, you know, to be completely transparent, the bulk of it goes to to um, to the EMS service because the town's providing the funding for the, the fire department, right? Um, it's, um, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a lot of money per se, you know, in today's standard. Uh, it's, you know, $20,000 we raise maybe. 
in the in the in the year's fund drive, yeah. right? And yeah. with that, we're paying, you know, insurance on the ambulance. We're paying liability insurance for the ambulance. There's a significant amount of expenses that are tied to the operational aspect of the of EMS, right? And then on top of that, what we just talked about before, new equipment, day-to-day -day, um, supplies, um, you know, all those kind of things get wrapped up. You know, some some EMS education above and beyond what the town provides. Right. So, it, long story short, is Matt, you, you we you could try, um, but then you got into conversation about you know, who who needs the money more? Does the, do we need the money? You know, the small amount of money we might be able to kick over to the town. Um, maybe there's some special times where we can, right? And um, but I don't think it can be anything consistent. Okay. Hey, Matt. It, yeah, Rich. It's interesting to hear some of these things from the both departments. But, you know, it, it, we've involved uh, from, you know, one fire truck or two fire trucks in each department to, you know, a big operation now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the town has grown so fast now that the department's needs are a lot different. So, you know, I, I think, you know, we just... You know, rely rely on both departments doing their best, but maybe the oversight of a fire commission is going to help the overall process. Well, I think it could help with budgeting for sure, uh, especially longer range budgeting. Well, you know, let me just pipe in here and just uh, sort of support Kenny here. Um, when it comes to capital equipment, you know, uh, I understand like Brookfield, they, they pay their own for the fire trucks themselves. I would be totally against that because it's just like I would be saying, hey, the police, you got to fund your own for police cars. And, uh, you know, th th this is safety. Uh, so I, I would not go that far, but I like the idea. Uh, what everybody's been talking about here tonight is the fact that combined EMS with fire and this commission, EMS of fire commission, uh, I'm learning something here tonight that I never knew before that you're paying for supplies. Uh, this, this is totally new to me. Uh, and, and, you know, whether or not you recover it through expenses, uh, uh, th th this should be noted uh, within the community that, uh, you know, a, a, an ambulance call is not necessarily a free ride. It costs the town some money. And uh, I think we've got to sort of say, okay, when it comes to EMS training, it'd be just like fire training. Okay, we pay, do we, we don't pay for fire training, do we? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. So, Absolutely. you know, the same thing I think should apply to EMS training because it's a safety thing. But uh, when there are certain capital things that, uh, you know, like uh, uh, the, the, the trucks themselves and, and uh, the equipment on board, uh, that, that, that should be, you know, within the town itself or fire, but on, on ambulance, I, I'd have to depend on, on this commission to, to find out and talking with the, the fire chiefs, say, what has been the history and what's the direction should we go? Because this town is not going to stay where it is, you know. I remember when I moved to this town, we had, what, uh, 7,600 people. We're, we're approaching 20,000 now. Um, and, you know, I guess that the, the top side of it is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, I think we, the max is like 23, 22,000. Yeah, there was a study done in the late, in the mid 60s, uh, tried to, tried to predict how many people would live here for the purpose of building schools. That was back when, you know, the, the town was considering building a new high school out at the, the uh, high school campus, no. uh, building a new middle school at some point in the future. And that study actually came in, and I, I, I looked at that. I found it in a drawer a couple of years ago. I gave it to Dr. Carver. But it predicted that the town would top out with all buildable land being used up at 22,000. And uh, today, I, I've gone over that with, uh, with Beth Cavagna. Uh, it, I don't think we'll ever get there. We'll probably never really, we'll probably top out somewhere between 20 and a half, maybe get closer to 21, but that's really it because the study predicted that there would be more high density housing being built. And in the last 20 years, planning and zoning is really structured. You know, there, there's some high density housing that's been allowed in, uh, but for the most part, it's been single family or duplexes. Uh, you know, there's, there have been some more apartments uh, being built in the last three or four years, but really the, the, 
the thrust has been for more single family and there's not enough room to put, you know, 2,000 more people, more homes there. Or 2,000 more people well, there. There, there, There's an overall philosophy that has changed too, because, you know, if I go back to 1975, when I first moved here, we had a lot of volunteers. Okay, yeah. today, your, today your EMS, uh, half of it's paid for, correct, if not more. Uh, and, and as we're going to go forward, you know, uh, most individuals don't live, uh, work in the town. So, you know, your volunteers, and, you know, eventually, you know, we have to face the fact that I, I hope this doesn't occur tomorrow, but, you know, maybe you're going to have to have a full-time EMS division. I don't know. Maybe. But, but uh, this is the, this is the reason why I think you know a fire commission working in conjunction with the the chiefs, I think we can put things in a positive direction here. Mm -hmm. Chiefs, what do you guys think of that? Uh, EMS is um, very tough on on the fire service side right now. I mean, we're we're dependent on the same people to run the ambulance twenty four seven, and then you know jump off the ambulance, jump on a fire truck if necessary. Um, tends to get a little a little hectic at times trying to get crews together um you know right now we do have the paid staff on both departments to make sure we get the ambulances out during the daytime hours and we cover it for the most part um on our own with volunteers at night which which is working out well but the volunteer pool is a little thin sometimes too and i think like uh chief parchaseppi was talking to come to combine the the two um departments not into one entity but get the crews to work together and and you know cross train on the on the ambulances and the charting systems because they're both different would would benefit the town such as like with the fire department side it's we can go up to stony hill if if i'm out in the stony hill area and they get a call and i have my gear i can get on their truck because i know we're covered by town insurance and it's all that's all the same it's a little bit different with EMS. We have different insurance companies, different rules and regulations, and and our people would need to be covered on their insurance, and their people would need to be covered on ours, and and that's kind of like where the where the hard part of getting this done is to to combine everything, is getting everyone on the same page, but a, a start would be to be able to combine the two pools of EMTs and EMRs, um, to staff these ambulances more, um, and like. Chief Parchaseppi said once again, you know, it, it would lessen the load on, on, you know, one department trying to cover everything. Yes, yeah, Scott, I agree. I mean, in the past, Scott, I don't know, I don't know when it got undone and why it got undone and who, who undone, uh, who undone it, if that's good English, but we, we, <laughs> we, 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 we used to have a combined staffing list that we sent to the state, right? Yeah. And some, somehow, you know, after I kind of rolled off the picture, it, it got, it, it changed, right? But we used to have a duplicate membership list with, as far as the PSA went for staffing, you know, that the state requests, the staffing list was the same, right? So, hey, we, we, so we, we could do that, right? Maybe you can help fill that in. When, when, did, these, when did these changes happen? Uh, not only that, but uh, you mentioned that at one point, the, the two fire services, did a longer term capital plan that included more and then then the town didn't want it anymore. When did when did that change? Tommy, I don't know. Do you remember? We did it. We did it for years. I can I can look on my oh, well, I mean, you know, we include stuff like air packs and you no, know, we still do. I mean, you haven't been chief yeah. any for six years, but yeah, no, we, we it, uh, it, Baker has it now to do for this year for a five year right. plan. Yeah, correct. Right. Thank you, we, John. Yeah, I mean, we used to include anything over like 10K yeah. would go on the, right. on the list, right? You know, sure. so how has EMS changed over the years? You know, it's a long, story, long contentious story. Um, you know, at, at one point in time, there was one PSA for the town. Um, yeah. There were staffing constraints on, on one department versus the other. There was some animosity between the two, and the PSA was separated, right? Um, you know, now we say, in retrospect, you know, it would be beneficial to be one, but there's still some animosity based upon that time from when that happened years and years ago, right? Probably, you know, almost almost 30, if I can remember. Um, well, you know, what you're, what you're saying just tells me even more that, that we're on the right track in forming a commission because 
you know, okay, look at look at the three of us. You know, you got me and Paul and Rich, and Paul and Rich know a heck of a lot more about what you guys do than I do. Uh, but I came into this not knowing anything about how fire and EMS systems work. I came from the private sector, and I think that a that a, a combined fire and EMS commission could provide a lot more consistency for you guys to your benefit. Because oh, I, I, I don't I don't disagree, Matt. I, I, I'm, I'm boggled that you used to do the, some of the things that I'm trying to do now and somebody told you to stop doing it. Well, uh, and, and, and maybe, maybe Chief Calver, Galver corrected me, but, I, but I, I've, I've gone to some of the budget presentations and never, it never seems like those things get highlighted. I mean, yeah. maybe, it gets, maybe it's done in the background with the Board of Finance, but, um, you know. Yep. But, you know. In, in, with all the respect, when the, t the departments present those, if they got to be taken with some, some earnest and have to be acted upon, right? Mm -hmm. If if you just constantly submit them and then nothing really happens with them, it gets kind of gets gets disappointing. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think you know part of the part of the challenge is, and and I've said this when I was chief and doing the budgets, you know, as and I know accounting and ledgers are, are complex and there's advantages to do certain things. But when you move money in and out of the budget versus the capital budget and the budgets of the, t the departments fluctuate up and down by varying degrees because of the of the accounting in the background, it just causes confusion amongst everybody, right? Mm -hmm. One year the budget's down 15%, next year is up 20% because what, you know, in the end the expenses are pretty consistent, but depend upon where the town chooses to fund them from on the ledger, um, makes makes the budgeting process a little more complicated yeah right all right good feedback thank you all right any 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 further comments no paul and rich you guys have any any other questions no, i i think this was enlightening frankly uh you know uh I like uh, the idea of ca calling this the Fire EMS uh, Commission. I yep. like the idea of having uh, uh, the chiefs or a representative from uh, each department as an advisory thing because you know it takes the politics out of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I, I find also the fact that some of these things that we assumed that the town was doing, it's really not paying for it, but it should be paid for. So mm -hmm. the perfect reason to have a fire commission. All right, great. Well, okay, going going once, going twice. Any other any other closing comments before we uh, before I start cooking dinner? <laughs> we'll be what's over. For what, what's for dinner? <laughs> Stir fried beef. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, listen, guys. Uh, thank you very much for your feedback. If you think of anything else, just email it in. Uh, we're not voting on anything tonight. Uh, I think the three of us are going to digest what we've heard. It got some really good suggestions, and I appreciate uh, the time you put into this. So um, I think it was a very productive discussion. So unless anybody has anything else they want to add, um, and hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion, motion, motion by Rich, second by Paul. Okay, great. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks yeah, again, guys, for showing up. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. you guys have a, yeah, have, a you. And have a th have a nice Thanksgiving and stay safe. Put on your mask. Be safe. Yeah. Be thank safe. You. Thanks, Tom man. Come and get you. Bye.